Hey, Cycle for Lifers. It's been a long time since we had another video recording going on. It took, uh, took about two months off to heal from the last crash at Bud's Creek. Check the video out. It's pretty cool. Shows me getting smacked in the back and a guy flipping over his handlebars off my, off my spine. Um, so it took a couple months off to, uh, to heal from that. And here we are. We're going to do this 89 KX250 that uh, I stripped down in Georgia when I was living down there. And there's the frame. We're going to get that powder coated. I was going to have all that done before the move, but I didn't have time. And then I got moved and concentrated on the new job and a bunch of different things going on. So we're just now, about a year later, getting back into this project. So I took a Home Depot bucket full of all these engine parts that I had just thrown in there a year ago. And I'm just going through and sorting it out. You know, what's clutch, what's transmission, what's kickstart parts. I got the external stuff together, ready to get bead blasted. I was going to send this out down there to Doug at Supercars down in um, Waleska, but now that I'm here, I got my own bead blaster here on site. So I'll go ahead and handle this myself, get this blasted up, get the cases repaired where they were damaged from getting the frame apart. You saw that in a previous teardown video. And uh, once this is bead blasted and clean and got all the muck off, then we'll go ahead and build the engine. And I've got new crank bearings and gaskets and all the stuff we need for that. Then after the engine's built, uh, we'll just spray it in aluminum color paint. Nothing expensive, nothing fancy. Um, you know, most of you guys going out motocrossing are going to be bead blasting and power washing your bikes, riding them in the mud. I mean, if you want to pay for powder coating on every little last little inch apart, and if you want to nickel plate all this hardware, I took this hardware and I just put it in the parts washer. And just poured it out to sort it out, you know, engine case bolts, shaft clips, things like that. I mean, if you want to take the time to nickel plate all that stuff, by all means, go ahead and do it. You know, you saw I showed you how to do it. But for 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 something like this, for a motocross bike that you're going to go out riding in the mud and you're going to be power blasting and power washing it, you know, it's not it, to me. To me, if it's a bike you're going to race in the dirt, I, I'm not. I don't want to spend the time on that. So. I just take the hardware out, clean it up nice and clean so it goes together nice, and sort it out. There's the head bolts, there's a jug bolt, there's a power valve bolt, you know, just get it all sorted and get it all put, put where it goes. But uh, you know, this project here is not, you know, a barber museum restoration. Um, we're going to do other bikes like that in the future like we've done in the past and we're going to film them for you. But not this one, not an 89 KX250. This is going to be an Evo style motocross bike ready for the track. All right. I figured we'd get a shot of what this thing looks like before we start, just as a reference. compressor recover because I did some heavy bead blasting out there and it's been running a long time and I overcame it so I came in and that guy over there too said the cranks dirty you think the cranks dirty too you don't want me to run it rusty you tell me to clean it up then <laughs> all right so two says I have to clean it up because it's not good so I'm gonna clean it up here we go You want to put a rag or something over top of that bearing you don't you don't want to get debris and junk stuff down in there that bearing is good I inspected that at Georgia and sprayed it with some chain lube to keep it from rusting uh, when I pack these parts so that bearing I know is good so you want to just do like this and try to keep it clean and then I'll go all around the rest of it and sand it up make it pretty You just want to knock the debris off and get anything that could fly off of it at high RPM and get in your engine and just, you know, I don't really care about the cosmetics of it, but you want to just get all the rough stuff off and make it nice. You don't want to put a crankshaft in a bead blaster because the bearing journals. 
if you take enough material off the journal area, you can make you can take that 1,007 inch interference fit off of your crank bearings where it mates on the female side to that male right there. You need that to be full size. So if for whatever reason you were to bead blast these, take your pin out, replace the bearing, never put that in a blaster because you can't keep it clean enough to keep the dirt out. But if you did do the halves independently and re repress it and true it, cover that with tape. Never clean that surface with a bead blaster. If it looks bad, press it bad, leave it tight. You don't, wanna, you don't want that surface to ever get smaller than it is because then you have crank bearing problems, especially in a high revving two stroke. Um, then you get the seal getting weak and air leaks and everything else. Bad news. So, yep, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to keep just doing this just like a... Okay, guys, now that we got the cylinder cases bead blasted and got the head blasted and the cylinder and all the exterior surfaces blasted just to get all the muck off of it, We'll do a final cleaning and painting when everything's done. But there's no sense painting these parts before you build the engine, guys. There's no sense painting parts and then trying to build an engine without screwing the paint up. By the time you deal with the chemicals and your greasy ass hands and get all that stuff done, you're just gonna mess the paint up. So build the engine first, get it all done, get it, get it finished and ready to bolt in, and then alcohol it down and get all the grease and grime off and then paint it. Yeah, you can get a more professional job with powder coating. Sure, spend the money, do it. I, you know, I'll enjoy it if you do it, looking at you doing it, because I'm not doing it. Um, you know, again, we keep going back to, this is not a Barber Museum street bike. This is a bike we're gonna ride. We're gonna beat the crap out of it. We're gonna crash it and ride it in the mud and the rain. So, you know, do I care about it enough to put a finish on it? Yes, I do. Do I care about it enough to put a professional powder coated, Sarah coated, you name a coated finish on it no i don't so i'm gonna clean the engine see the difference between the parts that have been bead blasted that's a non-bead blasted piece and that's a matte finish on a blasted piece okay so i just set that there as an example so now that we got all the aluminum blasted and matte finished and we got all the sand cleaned off of it and we got it apart and we got the power valve parts out um we're gonna get this power valve system working